A lot of things in cryptocurrency are blowing up around us, doom and gloom. A lot of things have imploded over the last year. Forget all that noise because with all of this peril brings opportunity, ways to make money in a relatively safe way. And it doesn't mean we have to rely on a centralized entity. I want to show you a way to earn money with cryptocurrency, easy, completely hands off, passive income, and you can do it with cryptocurrencies that you know are true cryptos or stable coins. A stable coin is a cryptocurrency pegged to say the US dollar like Tether. It's pegged one to one, supposed to be all that stuff. It's held up this long and it's outlasted some pretty major things like FTX, Terra Luna, whatever else. But yeah, I'm gonna break it down today because there's a lot of money to be made on that front because a lot of people are fleeing into stable coins. I'm gonna show you how to get that done and more today. My name is Vosker on the Vosker on YouTube channel. Let's dig into it. So the super quick recap, if you somehow don't know about this, CZ at main guy at Binance was like, yeah, you know, exiting out of FTT, the FTX token. They beefed with SPF, Sam Bankman fried chickens now burnt on Twitter for like a day. And then they like within that same day, he said, hey, actually, uh, you, you basically dumped our tokens and we're insolvent now. Can you buy us? And, uh, <laughs> you know, are they buying them or they're not buying them. Drama here, drama there, drama everywhere. The takeaway, though removing your cryptocurrencies from centralized exchanges, putting them into your wallets that you hold the private keys for, you become the custodian, you got everything, all the power, right? And look, it's not financial advice. <laughs> and I know we've talked a lot about FTX in the past. They are technically still our own only annual sponsor, specifically FTX US, uh, but yeah, I, I know I've talked about it. We're technically only sponsored by FTX US. But one thing I really want to focus on today is going to be Aave. As Solana's been crumbling down, its market cap's only $6 billion now. And in comparison, Aave has more liquidity than that entire market cap. Which, by the way, a ton of Solana's been unlocking and d -d -d dumping. So they support seven different networks. It's basically blockchains. 13 different markets, so multiple markets on some of these networks. And you do have to have MetaMask installed, set up, and, you know, usable, right? With that, you can get up to speed on the basics. Have an old guide, still completely relevant here. And, you know, it's basically just a browser-based wallet. So you've got that set up. You got your coins on there. Maybe use a centralized exchange as your fiat on-ramp. But then you got your coins over here on chain. Um, so, you know, I have some, a little bit of coins in here, but let me just show you an example, right? So I'm already connected. Let's say that I'm not. This is what the page looks like. You connect. I'm using a browser wallet and I'm in. So I'm on Ethereum right now, version two. There's also Ethereum AMM. To be honest, I wouldn't really bother with it at this point. It's kind of like defunct, not a lot of action over there. Polygon, Avalanche, and then there's also Avalanche on version 3 and Polygon on version 3 as well as Harmony, Optimism, Phantom, and Arbitrum. So we've been talking a lot about Arbitrum and Optimism lately. Those provide good opportunities to use something so established. Like It's a decentralized application. It's a smart contract. It's code you can read it's been verified it's been audited all that kind of stuff it doesn't mean that there's no risk here it doesn't mean that this stuff couldn't implode and blow up but it's clearly less likely to blow up than ftx because it's essentially outlasted it and it's really simple you have to provide collateral in order to borrow cryptocurrencies and they don't have an ftt solana market which is great news given the recent just plummeting in price of those two different cryptocurrencies. Where this gets even more interesting is the fact that people are fleeing into stable coins. Naturally, specifically, the older one, Tether, USDT. Right now, your interest rate on this is 16%. When I was setting this video up, you could earn over 30% on Tether in what is arguably the biggest and safest option. 
that's pretty crazy. Short-term gains though, just to be clear, right? Because we look over the last month, we see the supply interest rate, APR, vary between two and 3%. It's been heating up the last couple of days, but it's pretty much two to 3% over the last month with, with a huge skyrocket here we zoom out over the last six months right two to three percent recently was around only one percent for a few months which it ain't much and it's barely honest work before that one to two percent and then before that it was kind of around that two percent range looking over the last year data you know had some huge spikes uh, basically, the end of 2021 and early 2022 when crypto was much hotter. It's a quick, brief, boring recap in history there. But getting involved is simple. Getting involved is easy. Let's say I want to supply some Ethereum, right? And we'll just do a little test transaction. We'll put in $11 worth of a... <laughs> Ooh, gas fees. Wow. You tell me they're going to be $38? Why is this $38? Well everybody's panicking right now let's go to the gas tracker ethereum is such a, an abysmal absolutely just trash network transact i mean and it's always just a lie like you, you see this stuff and you think it'll be so much less basically you take the uniswap v3 swap price and you double it and that's probably what's going to be your cost on all this other stuff just absolutely ridiculous so I, i'm it's pissing me off I, i'm going to show you with a different blockchain because i've got coins on these other chains right now let's contrast this with arbitrum which is definitely going to be the cheapest okay same exact functions taking place here i'm gonna go to version three i'm gonna go to arbitrum here nothing too crazy we see isolated supply is grayed out basically consider this kind of like beta Right, it's in beta right now, at least on this one. This is one of the newest ones that they've added. So let's say I just want to supply some ETH. And uh, let's just do a very small microtransaction of $1 worth of Ethereum. This is very expensive in my history doing anything on the Arbitrum chain, yet it's still only 22 cents. So I supply it. There's no token allowances or anything needed. Uh, because it's ethereum, which is the main token here on this chain. So deposit ETH very simple estimated gas confirm We'll be very impressed with how fast this is three two one Come on. Don't let me down arbitrum. I was just typing you up a transaction. All right, pretty quick quick enough So now we're in we're earning two percent on our ethereum and just like that and uh, they don't have borrows open on this market. Honestly, I don't really care about borrowing cryptocurrencies. I know there's a lot of things you can do with it, but it just ain't your boy's thing. I'm here to sleep at night sometimes. I'm here to lend coins. If I'm doing anything crazy, you know, I, I'm dipping my toes into some leverage trades. And, and these, these days I've been opening up some shorts. Uh, I'm not talking about cargo pants, man. Wake up. I mean, it, it's really like this simple, right? There's so many bad things that are coming out of this FTX just explosion, right? So BlockFi was really happy about opening up this, you know, crypto yield business, BlockFi yield for accredited investors and things like that. And they basically got their head above water thanks to FTX extending a $400 million credit line. Well, FTX is blowing up and going underwater. So this, this is, you know, going to go up right with that. I'm very worried about BlockFi. I'd be very concerned to be using BlockFi. Historically, I put my money where my mouth is and I was using BlockFi. But just like BlockFi dumped me, I'm dumping BlockFi. And it's not just a petty ex-girlfriend kind of thing. It's actually because of this FTX explosion. FTX is paying 51 million in cash for Voyager assets and an additional 60 million in earnouts and incentives. But now FTX, is going up in up in flames so has voyager lost their savior but <laughs> there's really no better time than now to be huddled up in a corner taking your coins off of exchanges and maybe even out of these dApps these decentralized applications and just weather in the storm you hold the coins you're going to be good you sit an orange coin long term and you're okay and you do fine and you get some returns you sit in Ethereum long term, you got some more sporadic swings, but you do even better long term, historically compared. Stable coins have been fine, unless it was pegged to Luna or these other algorithmic ones, right? 
they are backed by big companies and big reserves, you know, for better and worse there, pegging one-to-one or using some kind of multi-collateral thing like DAI or, you know, obviously one-to-one like stablecoins, USDT, USDC, GUSD, or the almighty now going to probably rule us the Binance dollar if Binance swoops in and just buys everything in the ecosystem because they got it like that. Ah, it's just crazy. That's all I got to say. As always, you do whatever you want to do. I'm just trying to bring you quality qu- content here on the Viscoin YouTube channel. Of course, under our CLO, our chief legal officer here, Tails, the cutest, the fluffiest. Thanks for watching. Comment your thoughts on what you're doing down below. I'll see you on the next video.